What's up, ladies? Welcome to another episode of the To The Core Friday episode of Revitalize Womanhood. <laughs> had to wrap my head around that for a minute, you guys. It is a gloomy day. Oh my gosh, we had 70 degrees the other day and it was glorious. Oh my goodness, it felt so good after all that rain, right? And being cold and rainy. And today it is gray skies and flurries even. So weird. We So we got a little taste, a little sampling, a little tease, if you will. And it's so funny because my friend in Minnesota and, of course, my friend up in Canada, they're like, oh, nothing but snow for us, you guys. Even the fact that you guys are not in negative temperatures is jealous for them. But my friend in Minnesota, she made a very interesting statement the other day and she says everyone keeps just complaining about the weather and complaining about the weather and everything you talk about every conversation you have with someone out here it's complaining about the weather and and she said and what do they expect like this is where we live this is what it is every year so it's what do they expect it's going to all of a sudden be florida out here what do, what do they expect and and she says i'm going to start uh, or she said, I, I told my kids they're not allowed to say bad things about the weather anymore. They're not allowed to talk about the weather being bad or, or have that be part of their conversation during the day. And she says, I'm putting my foot down. I'm done talking bad about the weather. And I said, you know what you should do? Because it's Kelly. I said, you know what you should do, Kelly? Every time someone brings up how bad the weather is, you should say, okay, now say three nice things about the weather. <laughs> be that guy. Be that friend that's like, okay, you got to complain about it for a minute. Now tell me three good things things. <laughs> and that kind of brings me into a topic that we've been, I don't, I don't think there's any of these topics you can ever talk about enough, but we're starting into, uh, we've been talking about our April topic and it's, um, working on things. I kind of touched on this a little bit before, but it's working on things that's bringing us happiness in our lives. Right. And, and I've created this happiness tracker. Like I was inspired by my sweet friend, Randa, and she inspired me to create this happiness tracker. And I call it joy plus life equals living. And it's a tracker that reminds us to fill our life with joy. Okay. So basically the concept is you've got your habit and you write it down. So like your coffee in the morning, putting on a cute outfit, um, turning on a song and like screaming at the top of your lungs, singing this great song, like mine would be 80s. It would be um, Journey or Chicago or, right, any of those songs or even Backstreet Boys or even Britney Spears. You guys, we we all know the songs that when it comes on, we're like, oh yeah, this is my jam. And our kids are like, oh my gosh, mom, I can't believe you're singing this song, right? So dancing, like have a dance party. Think about the things that for me, this is for me, I'm talking to myself, ladies, and I'm hoping because I'm talking to myself that this applies to so many more of you out there and that I'm not alone in this. I, I think that would be the case, but maybe not, maybe I don't know. So I'm I'm thinking like along the lines of who did I used to be? I used to do these things. I used to get ready with music on and dancing, putting my makeup on with music on, right? It wasn't all serious and listening to self-help books. And and I used to, what did I used to do, right? I mean, how did I, I found joy in all sorts of things and I've kind of maybe lost those things, um, replaced them with more boring things. And, and actually... Oh, this is perfect. This is perfect for this. Actually, I was in my coaching call today for Taming Jane Academy with Trina Glines, and she actually called these things, oh, I wish I would have written this down, our femininity, right? It's the reason that we're not able to uncover this to be these things like this joyful, energy, playful, fun, that kind of thing anymore is because we've started, we've buried our femininity, right? These are the things that come out and make us uniquely us and what attracted my husband to me or what attracts your husband to you or what makes your friends want to be around you, right? What are those things? And why aren't you doing more of those things? Well, because we have like to-do lists now, right? So maybe the to-do list has taken over the fun things and that's not okay. That's not good. That's not a good thing to do. So I, I created a happiness tracker for 
my members in the Revitalized Sisterhood. And I think I will share that publicly because I think everybody needs that. I just shared it on my coaching call today with that, with that class. And I think everybody needs it. But even one step further than this is, are you already doing things in your life that do bring you joy, that make you happy, right? But maybe you're not thinking of them as things that bring you joy. Maybe you are thinking them as something that's a to-do list or something that has to be checked off. And so in your brain, your brain's telling you it's just like something you're doing. It's just a chore, right? It's not something that's bringing you joy. So it's not giving you those yummy, um, I don't know, what would it be that it releases endorphins or something? What (laughs) I'm obviously not a specialist, but what, what is it when we laugh or when we dance or when, you know, what releases in our body that makes this just feel so good and that's why we love doing it, right? So your brain isn't releasing those because you're thinking about the things that maybe you're just doing anyway in your daily life. You're thinking about them as a to-do list rather than things that bring you joy. So in the spirit of that, I wrote down a day in the life. And I encourage you, I challenge you to do this as well. When you get home or when you're near a notebook or whatever, if you're in the car driving, obviously, please don't do this. But you could start running through your head and and think about it with me. Like, think about it with me, what I say. I sat down and intentionally wrote down like the things I do in a day And I'm like, wait a minute, this is something that brings me joy. Wait a minute, this would go on my happiness tracker. Wait a minute, I need to start thinking of these things as things that bring me joy. And then I'm already habit stacked, right? James Clear would be so proud of me because I'm already doing the things that bring me joy in my day. They're already my habits. So I started with waking up one hour before my family, that brings me so much joy. I think I actually already intentionally think of this as something that brings me joy because I do it and I love it and I miss it when I don't get to do it. Like say the baby's had a hard last few nights. You might be able to tell on the YouTube today. I'm just like, and the gloom and oh, I'm just... I need to bounce out of it. I don't know if I'm getting a cold or if I have allergies. I don't know what it is, but I just need like I need to bounce out of it. I need some pep in my step so I can feel it that I've been a little more um, needing a little more sleep. So I haven't actually gotten my full hour in the morning and I feel that. So that is obviously something that brings me joy because I miss it when I don't get it right. So waking up an hour before my family for me gives me the opportunity to do whatever I want without anybody saying, mom, 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 mom come do this. Mom, can you come do this? Mom, where's my pants? Mom, where's my shoes? Mom, can you come do my hair? Mom, can you, right? (laughs) All the little things that go on. I can just sit and do whatever I want. I can do my posts for my business on Instagram, on social media. I can watch Netflix. I just sit and drink my coffee in silence and just mentally prepare for the day, right? It's usually, especially if I've come off a night of like yelling at my kids or something, I had an off day or having a fight with Rick. Usually in the mornings, it's a really, really important time for me to set my intention for the day. Like my top three in my brain of what I want to get done, not goals, not like I need to report it, record an episode or I need to do this. No, 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 not to do list. I'm setting my intentions for what I would like the vibe of my day to feel like, right? So those are my hour before everybody wakes up. Those are set my intentions is more for the vibe. It's not checking off like habit trackers. It's not a to-do list. It's like, what is the vibe that I want to keep in me and put out into the world today, right? And usually it is, I, I've noticed I get on Marco's and send a Marco to Mandy or send a Marco to Kelly and I'm good morning, right? Like, because I've given myself a chance to not just be rolling out of bed, rushing into the car to get the kids to school. I've given myself that time to be alert, be aware, get my mental space in the right place. All right, well, let's move on from that. It is a very important one to me. I definitely encourage it. We're reading the book right now. Our month, um, book of the month is 
Robin Sharma, who will cry when you die. And and honestly, he's not the only one. I think Stephen Covey talks about this. I think James Clear talks about this. I think <laughs> I don't think I've come across a book yet that hasn't said get up earlier in the morning, start your day earlier, use that time in the morning to set the intention for the day. So this is not n- anything I'm like just magically came up with. I did magically come up with it because it's something that I actually really love to do. So I do it for myself. But yes, it is an actual coaching technique, habit, good practices, all around good thing for you to do. So even if you can Go to bed a little sooner, like 15, 20 minutes sooner so that you can wake up 15, 20 minutes sooner, 30 minutes sooner, just right. And he also goes into saying it's not even how much sleep you get. We we all focus so much on, oh, I got to get my eight hours. I got to get my eight hours. I got to get my 12 hours. I got to get my, who gets eight hours? Are you kidding me? I get like five hours, <laughs> which is horrible. But he talks about getting the best kind of sleep, which if you go back to December and you Remember my Friday episodes, my to the core episodes every Friday, I dedicated to my core categories so that we could get ready to focus on goal setting or new New Year's resolutions or whatever we were doing beginning of the year, right? So if you go to the body, I'm sure I talked about it in beliefs as well, but it would have been in body, is sleep, how important sleep is. And so it's not even necessarily the amount of time that you're asleep, it's the quality of sleep you're getting. That's what matters, right? So you could be habitually getting six hours of sleep every night and still be super refreshed and functioning so well, much better than someone like me who, who sleeps maybe eight hours. I don't, I wish, but who sleeps eight hours, but it's broken sleep, right? It's interrupted sleep. So practices, best practices like turning off TVs, turning off lights, don't scroll through your phone, I think the I think they say an hour before you go to bed, no no screen time an hour before you go to bed. It lets your brain settle down, right? Take a bath, do some kind of meditation, whether that's breathing, um whether that's you know, I remember I'll take with this forever and I've taught my kids as well when you're laying in bed and you're just kind of still unsettled and your body still has the wiggles in it and you start at your toes and you flex, 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 flex as tight as you can and then you release and then you work up to your calves and you flex and flex and flex and then you release, right? And then you work up your body this way and it just kind of makes it so your body releases and melts into the bed. I've taught that practice to my kids as well. Anyway, so it's the quality of sleep. So think about those things as well. So making my coffee goes along with my morning routine and it really is something that brings me joy, but I don't think of it that way. I never think of it that way because it's happening no matter what. Come hell or high water, I'm drinking my coffee. So I've stopped thinking about it as something that I enjoy, but I did. I do. I went out and bought myself, it's not even that like fancy, but it is a fancier coffee maker that it has a little thing on the side that will warm and froth the milk, right? Foam, foam the milk. And so for me, that is a thing I get to do. So I wrote down a couple things because I didn't want to forget because not only do I love it because it's, it's a process that I get to do, but it saves money. I know that me making that drink at home and having my coffee from home, it saves my family money and that makes my husband happy and that makes me happy because he's happy and it makes all of us happy because maybe that money that month goes to a trip we took or something, right? So that makes me happy. Um, I also, I make it exactly how I want it. No line, no having to wait for other people to order their coffees and listen to their insane coffee orders. (laughs) <laughs> and I get to be in my pajamas. I get to go snuggle back into my bed and do whatever I want to do for an hour while I drink my coffee or whatever. So yeah, making my own coffee, that is a brings me joy. It's on my happiness track tracker. It's on it. It's already, it shouldn't be on it because it's already there. All right, next is driving my boys to school. Now, I will say I am not great at this all the time. Sometimes when they're fighting with each other and I 
don't allow myself to have as much patience as I wish I could. Sometimes, yes, it's more like a lecture on the way to school, but sometimes it's not. Sometimes it's really fun. Sometimes we get to listen to the one radio station that does the secret sound or whatever they do. And so we sit and listen to it and we're like, oh, what could that be? And we try to guess what the secret sound is. Or my kids are really funny and sometimes when they're in a fun mood, they tell jokes. They make up their own jokes and they tell jokes and they're eight and 11. So, (laughs) and my eight-year-old loves to tell facts about everything. He is a know-it-all. He thinks he knows everything about animals and he probably really does. He knows way more than me, but, but still it's, it's filled with funny moments like that. So if you can think about that time that you have to be in your car anyway, you have to be doing that But that's something that's fun. That's time you're getting to spend with your kids before they're gone to school or before you have to go do whatever you're doing, right? That's time you get to spend with them. So how are you utilizing that time, right? Okay, driving the boys to school. Let's see, did I make sure? Oh, yes, before they get out of the car, I love to make sure that they hear me say, I love you, right? I say, I love you. Have a good day. Win the day, right? I talk a lot to them about exactly what I talk about here, of course, is choosing how you show up in your life, choosing how you show up in that day. You've chosen, I mean, maybe they would have chosen to sleep in a little bit, but not because they've chosen to get up and mind and follow the rules and get ready for school. So you're doing it anyway. So why not do it? with intentionality of I am going to win this day rather than moping along like Eeyore, right? Remember me talking about you telling your story? Sorry, I can feel myself getting stuffy. Maybe it is allergies or a cold. I don't know. My last episode um, a couple weeks back for March before the hot seat episode was um, how you tell your story, how you show up in your life is you telling your story, right? So I love to remind them of that kind of thing. And hopefully that sticks with them. Maybe if I say it enough, it'll stick someday. All right. Make today great. Make today great, right? Um, Gym. The gym. I love this time. It's totally my own time. It is a self-care thing. I probably don't do it as much as I should these days because other things pop up and I put that on the back burner because it's an easy thing to do, but it's bad. I notice when I do that. I notice I suffer. My body suffers. My mental state suffers because going to the gym for me is 100% self-care. And part of that is putting on a cute outfit. If you have a hard time going to the gym, a good habit to start doing is go spend a little money. It doesn't have to be a fortune. I'm not telling you to go out and go to Lululemon or go out and you know, get the fanciest running shoes or whatever is on the market. I don't even know. I'm saying go to TJ Maxx. Oh my gosh, there's plenty of great things at TJ Maxx. Hello, Amazon has Lulu dupes now and my sister swears by them. I haven't purchased any, but my sister swears by them. So it doesn't have to be an expensive thing, but I do recommend putting in that kind of money and time into yourself. That is self-care. If you you feel good, about how you look, if you have confidence in what your appearance is, it gives you more confidence to be brave enough to go do the things that you need to do. So I, I've been trying to reach out to, I'm going to have a style coach come on here and talk about this in regards to your appearance, your outer appearance, your um, how much effort you put into yourself. It's not vanity. It is a relationship with yourself. It is you loving yourself, showing yourself self-care, self-love, right? Giving yourself some time instead of just giving everything you've got to everybody else on the planet. You're allowed to say, no, I want to focus on me a little bit. I want to do that too. So we, isn't it funny? You will constantly see this happen. You can be out anywhere at the store, at the gym, at the wherever, and the mom will look like, bless her little heart, she's got yesterday's shirt on that's still got somebody's lunch or boogers smeared across it and her hair up in a knot and 
don't worry, I'm talking about myself, guys. <laughs> this is probably, sometimes this is me. So I'm not talking about you and shaming you. I'm saying that I'm talking to myself most of the times when I record these things. But, you know, you see this mom and she's, she's with her kids. And this was especially me with Castle, with my first, of course, second, pretty much still. And third, eh, I don't have them that often. So it's usually Rick. But you will see the kids are so well put together. They look, they're like, the mom is saying, I, this is how I want you to judge me off how my kids look. Not how I look. Judge me off how my kids look. Their hair's done. They've got the cutest little outfit on. It's like I spent time to dress this little doll and look how adorable they look. And they do. They do. But mama Spend a little less time focusing on these cute little dolls and put a little time back into yourself, okay? Slap on some mascara. Get you at Walmart. Hey, Walmart has way cute stuff these days. There is a girl on Instagram. She's from here, St. George. She's married to one of the officers, St. George officers. And she finds, she does, that's her Instagram is, she's an influencer for, and a lot of her finds are um, budget finds and so cute. Oh my gosh. It helps that she's like uh, stunning and gorgeous, but seriously, the stuff that Walmart's putting out, good stuff. So again, it doesn't have to be expensive, but go find some things that make you feel good about yourself. So then maybe you will want to go to the gym and show off that cute outfit, right? Maybe you will Like that will motivate you to put one step in front of the other and go out and and do that. Make the commitment to the gym. So yeah, that's that's kind of not. So the gym is a happy place for me because it helps me mentally and physically. But also I do love putting on a cute outfit and going to the gym. So all right, let's see. Get a day in the life. We're back in the day in the life. And and remember, I want you guys going through these with me as well. Are these things that bring you happiness? Are these things that you're already doing every day, but you're not thinking about them as things that bring you joy? Okay. And and I did have, I posted up in our private Facebook group for the Revitalized Womanhood Facebook group. And one of the questions was, what's your biggest struggle as a woman? Was this one that one? Or was it, what's your relationship with yourself? Struggle as a woman. I think it was what's your biggest struggle as a woman. And and a couple comments were, I struggle with my appearance. I struggle with how I feel about myself and my in terms of my appearance. And I suggested, so this brings us to my next thing. For me, getting ready brings me joy. It absolutely brings me joy. Now, you might not know that because a lot of times I don't do it, but... <laughs> I try to do it more. I try to be more intentional about doing it, especially when I have to record or when I'm doing some things. And did you notice that language, have to record? No, 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 no. Get to record. Okay, we'll come back to that. But so if you haven't heard me talk about my saint journey, this is so funny. No, I'm not plugging saint, but I am because when things change your life, you talk about them, right? I tell that to all of my members of the Revitalized Sisterhood. It's like, you know what? If this is changing your life, talk about it. If you found a vacuum cleaner that like did your dishes, changed the baby's diaper, walked the dog, I mean, right? You'd buy that vacuum cleaner and you would tell everyone in the world about it. It's changing your life. Something changes your life, you talk about it, right? Well, saint was that way for me, okay? So I was I would buy makeup. My husband is one of those husbands that likes the look of makeup. He does. He likes me to put, and don't look at me because I obviously I don't do as much as he would like, but but I do. So when I, I finally came back around to Saint, I'll say background because it started here in St. George and I hated it, hated it. So I never came back around. And then four years, five years later, um, because I was, it was during COVID during the lockdown and I was, had morning sickness really bad. And so I was just kind of trapped up at the cabin and morning sickness. And so I would, I would wind up watching get ready with me. My friend Ashley would do the get ready with me videos and it was so soothing for me and I would just love watching her and it just made me feel better, right? Better than the crummy feeling of morning sick and being stuck in a cabin because of the lockdown. But anyway, so I'm like, hey, I have this makeup that I bought five years ago. Why not? I'll give it a try. You know, gross. Ew, five years ago. It was fine. It was fine. 
So I got it out and I'm like, I'll give it a try. I've got nothing else to do up here, so I'll give it a try. So I started playing around with it, whatever. And I got to where I was looking at myself in the mirror going, huh, I I really look pretty today. Like, I really love the, this color. It's showing up and I really didn't have to use that much because that's a big deal for me. I, I minimum makeup with the most effect, right? So, um... Anyway, wow, where was I going with that? Oh, getting ready. So because I was introduced to say again, because I gave it a chance again, I realized that I really love it. It was something that I absolutely was changing my life in the terms of it was making it so I wanted to put makeup on. It was really fun to do. It was really easy to do. It was really fast. And and as soon as we started traveling again, I did lots of videos on that is showing how fast and easy it was because it's in one compact and I'm a travel mom. So that's exactly what I needed in my life. So I talk about that all the time. So getting ready for me does bring me joy. It is happy for me, especially because I found something that that brings me joy. So in regards to the women that had made this comment on the Facebook page about something they struggle with and that's in regards to their appearance, I said, okay, I'm going to make a challenge to you. Here's a challenge. Here's a challenge to all you listeners. Anybody that has this, this, I have a hard time with my appearance, right? I challenge you to pick one thing, okay? One thing that you'd like to maybe master or something that you, you find yourself constantly saying like, oh, I really like her hair. I wish my hair looked like that. I wonder how she gets her hair to look like that. Or if you're like, oh my goodness, look at her eyeshadow. I really love the look of that eyeshadow. I wonder how many colors or what the technique was to get that eyeshadow look, right? Or putting together outfits, right? Okay, so there, you know, ladies, we know when you're scrolling or when you see a woman out in public or, or on TV, we know what draws our attention, Right? If it's the hair, if it's the eyeshadow, if it's how she's put together, if it's the sneakers, I don't know, whatever. Here's my challenge to you. How much time do you actually put into trying to do something for yourself, right? Because I would bet you it's none. I would bet you that you've already just decided that you can't do it. It's not for you. It'll never look the same. I am willing to bet you money that that is the conversation that you have in your head so you don't even try. This world is so overflowing with information on YouTube and TikTok and get ready with me's and there is so much information out there. I learned how to fix a toilet when we owned the vacation rentals off YouTube and I fixed the toilet myself. Like I, I can't tell you any more easy ways. YouTube, go to YouTube, look up hair tutorials and you can get very specific. I want my hair to look like this or find the girl that you think looks that cute. I know exactly which girls on Instagram I go to for hair tips, for eyeshadow tips. I, because I know and I like what their look is. So I go back to them and I follow their tricks that they do. But I'm going to tell you right now, for all of us who have put work in, figuring out how to curl their hair or figuring out what products work for our hair or it didn't just happen overnight. It's been, how old am I? Okay, 40. So it's been 33 years that I have been putting effort into trying different things with how I look, right? My appearance. I have tried so many different things, tried on so many different types of clothes to see what I like and you go through different phases and see what works for you in that phase and different seasons and at this time in my life I could wear jewelry necklaces and earrings and yeah right I have a two-year-old there's no way I'm wearing necklaces and jewelry or perfumes I don't wear perfumes ever since I got pregnant I never wear perfume again no so the point I'm making is I challenge you to sit down with your goals and say okay if body in my body goal there is something about my appearance that I want to get better at or change then you allot yourself 15 minutes 10 minutes 10 minutes 15 minutes it doesn't have to be that much 10 minutes a day to watching 
a YouTube video and actually putting it to use, okay? Information without implementation is useless. So you have to actually do it. You see where the information is and then you have to apply it, okay? There's your challenge. And I would love for you to post a story, post a Instagram post, tag me in it, come put it on the Facebook group for us. Tell me that you're doing it because I challenge you. This is a double dog dare for you to get out of your comfort zone and quit wishing that you could do or look like someone else and actually put the effort into doing it. Don't just sit there and say, oh, well, I can't do it. Because guess what? The whole point of human kind is if someone has done it, that means anybody can do it. Yeah, it might be easier for some people. It might take you a lot more work. But guess what? The, the fact of the matter is that if it's been done, you can do it. Even if it hasn't been done, you could be the first person to do it, right? That's the whole point. So don't just sit there and say, oh, that could never be me or I could never do that. Go do it. Put some time into it. 10 minutes a day, that's nothing. 10 minutes a day. Set a timer so that you're not stuck on your phone scrolling after that. Set a timer, 10 minutes, boom, watch the video, go try it out. There you go. So I'm sorry, that was like a lot of information on the getting ready and that brings me joy, you know? Okay. And then working. Working brings me so much joy. Just like I just said, it's all in my language. I don't have to come record. I get to come record. I think it's so much fun. I love doing it. Um, I get to have conversations with people that I would have never gotten to have conversations with. I think that's so exciting. And just like my episode that came out today, obviously this will post later, but my episode that came out today was Tiffany Carter. And that those kind of conversations, that one and, and Emily Frazella, like, and Yvonne Verity, like, oh my gosh, these are people that I, I literally had no clue. I have no idea who these people are. They're strangers. And I just reached out and said, hey, I'd love to have a conversation. And we did. We just had a great conversation. And all it took was being curious. I didn't even use my notes for a lot of them, you know, um, because it was such an organic genuine conversation and it was so fun for me that was so exciting for me and and because of this it's opened up my doors for retreats and getting to go to retreats and getting to meet other women like right now I'm working on I made this huge epiphany I had this huge epiphany of what do I do the best that fills me just brings me so much joy because of this topic that I've been hovering around for the last couple weeks and that is getting out in the public, like being face to face with people. So my most favorite part about this community is I said the Instagram is a tool, podcast tool, Facebook tool. It's all, they're all tools for me to be able to have these relationships with these women and then to get to the live, the live events. That is my bread and butter. That is what, that's my cherry on top. That's what I work for. That's what I do this for. I do this to build these relationships with these women. I love, love, love building these relationships and then getting to meet them live is, that's what I do it for. That's what I work all of this. I do it for that. So getting to work and podcast and have my community and get to meet all of these amazing women and open doors to network, to meet other amazing women and um, all these other communities that are doing the same kinds of things. So I'm going to three different events this month and I am so excited about it. I am, I'm seriously vibrating. I'm so excited about it to get to go around and I'm going to go around and knock doors like a door to door salesman and take my business cards and my community flyer and be like, Hey, how are you doing? This is me. Here's some donuts. Like I'm here in town just so you know, Hey, my name is Gina, right? Like I'm so excited for that to get to go and do FaceTime with with people, with women who run businesses here in my community. And I'm so excited about that. Happiness, happiness. These are things that bring me joy. Sit down and ask yourself, what is it that really makes me happy? What is it that really lights my fire that just really puts that pep in my step and do more of that, right? Alrighty, then, oh my gosh, one of my most favorite things of the day, and this is obviously not a checklist. This is just one of the most favorite, my favorite, and I love it and I soak it in because it won't happen forever. But my my baby 
when I come in the door at night at, I don't even know, five o'clock at night, whatever, whatever time I get home, he runs, he drops whatever he's doing and runs to me and gives me the biggest hug and snuggles. And that is like, oh, it was all worth it. The entire day, the entire night of him being up all night was worth it for that. I have to remember that, right? All right. So that's the best one. And then you know, obviously there's other things in my day at night that bring me joy, hanging out with my family. Um, if we get to have good food or a good conversation, Rick and I get to have good conversation or whatever, but, but really the, the best part of my night is getting to sit on the couch with my husband and watch like a travel show or watch like a food show. That's I love that. That's, that's like our hot date night now. Rick has now implemented actually going out on a date once a week and getting dressed up for each other. But I kind of think I still just want to like, I'll get dressed up for you, (laughs) but can we still just sit on the couch? (laughs) I just love it. It's like one of my favorite things. And especially having his full attention watching the show with me and appreciating that we both really, really enjoy food shows or we both really, really enjoy travel shows because that's us planning for date nights in the future. Like being able to see a restaurant in Croatia that we really want to go to or being able to see this chef um, making a dish in Italy that we're like, we're going to go do that. We're going to try that, right? Last night we were watching about Ireland and learning all about these potato dishes. And I'm like, cool. I totally want to go try all those now, like potatoes, (laughs) but I really want to go try them now. So that really, that brings me so much joy. But the point is, I hope I made it very clear in this episode. My point is to start acknowledging that these things bring you joy. Oh, I didn't even talk about the pickup line. The pickup line that makes every mother on the planet crazy, it seems. I love it. I absolutely love it. I have permission to literally do nothing for 30 minutes. I get to just sit in my car and Rick has now perfected it. He's taken it one step further. He parks in the parking lot and the kids come and find his car. Like he doesn't even sit in the pickup line and move. He's like, then you got to put it in park, roll forward, put or put it in drive, roll forward, put it in park. He's like, no, that's for the birds. I just sit in the parking lot and take a nap. (laughs) I'm like, nice, you're winning. Okay, this is a time when, yes, you could be angry. You could be annoyed. You could be bugged that people really don't understand the whole concept behind the zipper when you're pulling out of spaces. But Why? You have permission to sit there for 30 minutes and do nothing. You have to be there. You have to. You have to pick up your kids. You have no other option. So why not make the most of it? Oh my gosh, when it's sunny outside, I roll my windows down and I put my legs out and try to suntan. Like I try to get some sun on my legs, paint my toenails, watch Netflix. I mean, whatever. Do lives on Facebook. Whatever I want to do. I get 30 more minutes of doing whatever I want to do, right? Fill that time with your quality time for yourself. Take it from me. All right. I think I have beat this horse to death. Fill your life with joy. Find the things in your life that you're already doing that bring you joy and think about them that way because that way you are just already bringing yourself so much joy without having to add things, even though adding things is like just icing on the cake, right? All right, ladies, thank you so much for spending this time with me. I will wrap this up by reminding you that we have our revitalized retreat coming up May 18th through the 21st here in St. George, Utah. It's going to be amazing. If you have missed somehow, if you're one of the one people on the planet that haven't seen a post that I've been posting all about this retreat, please come find me. And I would love to send you the material on it. It is now open to the public. We have eight spots left at this time, which might not be the truth when this airs in two weeks. So get on it. If you have any questions, you can find me at Revitalize Womanhood on Instagram. You can shoot me an email, Gina at RevitalizeWomanhood.com. Or just come hang out with us over at uh, RevitalizeWomanhood.com. And there's all sorts of goodness in there at the in the website for that. 
please, 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 if you wouldn't mind, if you haven't already, go and rate and review any of my podcast episodes. I would surely appreciate it. It helps me get this get this message out, out further, right, into the podcasting sphere if you rate and review and help me with that. And if this is a message that you think another mama needs to hear or an amazing woman in your life needs to hear, please, please, please share it along. And if you share it on your Instagram or social media, please tag me. I would love to know that this inspired you or helped you in some way. Thank you so much for spending this time with me. We'll see you next time.